Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has decided to hold the Ministry of Home Affairs under his jurisdiction for the moment. This seems to have agitated Rashtra Swatantra Party that has now threatened to withdraw its support from the government. In a different context, parties have expedited discussions on the candidates for the next president. The national politics is hence bracing for busy days ahead. Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the top stories of the hour. Premier Dahal decides not to assign Ravi Lamichani the Ministry of Home Affairs until full text of Supreme Court's verdict is released. Swatantra Party threatens of withdrawing from the government. Parties expedite internal discussions to finalize the candidate for president's election. Maori Centre and Nepali Congress looking for a consensus. UML faces challenge to secure the post. Kathmandu Metropolis fails to utilize development budget, no progress in good governance, tourism and employment generation. And the Working Committee of Cricket Association of Nepal decides to lift the suspension on former skipper Sandeep Lamichani. His participation in nearing international matches yet uncertain. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has decided to hold the Ministry of Home Affairs under the Office of the Prime Minister and Council of Ministers until the full text of the verdict of the case related to the citizenship of Rabi Lamichani is made public. At today's meeting of the officials of CPN Maui Centre, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal said that a decision regarding appointment of the Minister for Home Affairs would not be taken at the moment. Dahal said that the meeting had suggested making a decision regarding Home Minister after the full text of the Supreme Court's verdict is available and further added that discussions would be held with the parties in the ruling coalition in this regard. Members attending the meeting of the officials of Sipin Maui Centre, which lasted for two days, stressed on Prime Minister having the Ministry of Home Affairs under the Office of Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers. The meeting has also decided to make efforts for a consensus regarding the presidential election. The meeting is also understood to have delved into the change in responsibilities of members of the party. Tomorrow's meeting of the Standing Committee is to decide on such changes. A media person turned politician Ravi Lamichani, who lost all positions of Deputy Prime Minister, Minister for Home Affairs and Member of the Lower House, following the Supreme Court verdict on his citizenship case, is now making efforts to resume those posts. Lamichani, who has been reinstated as the chairperson of Rashtra Swatantra Party after completing required procedures for citizenship and had entered politics with the slogans of ethics and good governance. However, even his party, which is new in Nepali politics, seems to be no different than other traditional parties and their affinity for power. The only reason for these parties is to reinstate Lamichani's post of Deputy Prime Minister, Minister for Home Affairs and the Parliamentarian. Lamichani has already made this decision from the party and has begun issuing warnings of quitting the government if Rashtra Swatantra Party is not assigned the Home Ministry. All party decisions since its inception have been guided by Lamichani and the party is operated by his aspirations. Despite the promises of ensuring internal democracy in Rashtra Swatantra Party, Chairperson Lamichani is dominant in all of the party's actions. There are five officials from among the 24-member Central Committee of Rashtra Swatantra Party that include Chairperson, Deputy Chairperson, General Secretary, Joint General Secretary and Joint Treasurer. These officials were selected on the basis of consensus. The party, which had said of selecting candidates through online votings from general members before the election saw the participation of 49,000 in the voting process. However, dissatisfaction was seen inside the party as party chair Lamichane and few officials had selected the proportionate candidates. Public have also begun criticizing the new political parties of following the old parties in their operation and aspirations for power. Lamichani's efforts to regain power is also being assessed from the lenses of unethical practices. Rashtra Sotandra Party, which fielded candidates in 131 electoral constituencies of the House of Representatives in the November 20 elections, did not field any candidate for the provincial assemblies. The party has expanded its organization structure in only 60 districts so far. Despite securing around 1.2 million votes in the proportionate category, the party is yet to expand its reach throughout the country as it seems more focused on power. This has increased doubts if the new parties will also end up being like traditional parties. Now, following the publishing of the schedule for the election of the president and vice president, political parties have expedited internal discussions. 
The Election Commission has set presidential election date for March 9, followed by the election of Vice President on March 17. Members of the Federal Parliament and Provincial Assemblies will both vote in both elections. In case of absence of unanimous candidate, the candidate securing more than 50% is elected to the post. In case there are more than two candidates and none of them secure more than 50% votes, another round of election is held between top two contenders. Based on the current numbers, it is unlikely that a single party will secure more than 50% votes. Hence, competition exists between the ruling and opposition sides. However, CP Now Center, which is leading the coalition government, is firm in its stance of national consensus for the election of the president. Considering the federal parliament and provinces, CPN Mao Center has a vote weight of 7,745. CPN UML has been claiming that the ruling coalition will vote for UML's candidate based on the agreement reached on 25th of December last year. However, with 15,223 vote weight, UML is facing challenges in securing the position of president. Rashtra Swatandra Party, which has 19 federal lawmakers, has a vote weight of 1,501. The party has been voicing for the victory of the candidates of the coalition and has said that the candidate will be decided by the coalition. Meanwhile, Rashtra Prasadandra Party, which has the agenda of reinstating monarchy, is also voting in the presidential election. The party has a vote weight of 2,450. Nepali Congress has already decided of fielding its candidates for president and vice president. However, the largest party of the lower house is in favor of a president with national consensus. With the highest vote weight of 16,221, Nepali Congress is making efforts to ensure victory for its candidates. 332 members of the federal parliament and 550 of provincial assemblies will vote in the elections of the president and vice president. The weight of vote of one federal lawmaker is 79, while that of provincial assembly member is 48. When Balindra Shah began his term as the Kathmandu Metropolis Mayor nine months ago, the public had great expectations from him. However, considering the six months of budget implementation, Shah's performance has largely been questioned considering the lack of progress in labour and employment and also administrative good governance. Immediately after assuming office, Balindra Shah declared of separating degradable and non-degradable waste. However, the announcement has almost become a failure in absence of a concrete plan. Balin also put forward the plan of proper management of basement parking by removing parking on the roadsides. However, the problem remains the same in many places, while the excavation works for Tukuche River was put on hold by the Department of Archaeology. In addition to this, the use of force to remove the settlement of landless quarters inside Kathmandu without holding discussions at the Metropolis Executive Committee did himself a lot harm. Balindra Shah also reached the Ministry of Home Affairs to seek support for management of parking and landless quarters. In the first six months of the ongoing fiscal year, Balendra Shah has not spent a single rupee in tourism, forest, water resources and irrigation, science and technology, labor and employment, and administrative good governance. The Kathmandu metropolis has spent 42% in education and 31% in culture so far, alongside 17% in peace, good governance, and energy. However, the Kathmandu metropolis has appeared uninterested in reconstruction of archaeological structures damaged by the April 2015 earthquake. Palindra Shah, who likes taking random decisions and actions, does not find it necessary to hold discussions at meetings of the executive committee. On Tuesday, the KMC had asked for short-term and long-term plans with all wards. It will not be easy for Balindra Shah to face the challenges caused by the absence of concrete plans and adequate discussions. The previous leadership of the Kathmandu metropolis had faced severe criticisms for the lack of transparency. But Mayor Balindra Shah is being criticized even heavier as he is acting against public aspirations from him. 
Having said that, it is also important to consider that interest and monitoring of works of the mayor of the largest local level of the country in terms of revenue, budget, population and transaction is natural. Now, several challenges have surfaced in higher education because of problems in monitoring of universities and academic programs. The National Planning Commission has suggested the government to address these issues. Higher education programs are available in 13 federal universities and seven university standard health science academies. There are five more provincial universities. While these entities operate guided by operate and are guided by acts and regulations, problems have surfaced in higher education. With the universities operating similar academic programs in the same districts and places, they are facing the shortage of students while quality have been compromised. With challenges in management of scholarships, ensuring quality, investment, research and studies, and monitoring and assessment, the National Planning Commission has urged the government to address these challenges. Education experts are of the opinion that quality of education has been compromised as universities have granted affiliations to academic institutions established with the objective of meeting political goals. The Commission has said that issues have also surfaced in health science academies. Experts have therefore suggested formulating a separate Higher Education Act with specific guidelines to address issues of the education sector. Provincial universities have begun facing financial crisis as they have failed to gain momentum. Meanwhile, 121,000 students have left Nepal to seek higher education abroad as academic programs in Nepal do not ensure employment opportunities. It is imperative to ensure quality education at home, which also ensures job to curb the number of Nepali youths who leave the country for abroad. In this context, in our Public Voice segment, today we've asked in several provinces what improvements should universities make in order to raise the standards of education. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. Nepal has ranked 110th among the countries that report of corruption. According to a report issued by Transparency International, Nepal has scored 34 points out of 100 in the Corruption Perception Index and has been listed in the 110th position. Nepal had scored 33 points in 2021 and was in the 117th position. Despite negligible improvement this year, Nepal is still in the bracket of most corrupt nations. According to the list, Denmark has become the highest rated country in the Corruption Perception Index with 90 points, while Somalia has been listed as the most corrupt nation with only 12 points. In the context of South Asian countries, Bhutan is in the 25th position, Maldives and India are in 85th, Sri Lanka in 101, Pakistan 140, Bangladesh 147 and Afghanistan in 150th position. China is in the 65th position with 45 points. Issuing the list, Transparency International pointed out that effective works against corruption failed to be conducted and corrupt government is not capable of ensuring public safety, which leads to people loathing the government and political upheavals. The organization further says country in the Countries in the Asia-Pacific region has discarded, disregarded in fact, actions against corruption. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before today's question, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked you why has the issue of taxi fares not solved yet? 27% voted for option A, helpless government, 54% for B, taxi businesses, high-handedness, and 19% for C, weak loss. Here's today's question. Why has corruption not been curbed in Nepal? Your options are A. Lack of actions from the CIAA, 
B. Absence of government commitment and C. Increasing corrupt mentality. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Sports News the Working Committee of Cricket Association of Nepal has decided to lift the suspension on former skipper Sandeep Lami Chani, according to Birinder Bahadur Chand, Khan's executive member. Official announcement is, however, awaited. Likewise, it is also uncertain if Lami Chani will participate in Nepal's matches ahead as Nepal prepares to host Namibia and Scotland under the Tri Series fixture of ICC Men's Cricket World Cup League Two that has been scheduled from February 14th. Earlier, dissatisfied seven members of the working committee had left the meeting with a written demand of resignation of Khan President Chatur Bahadur Chand. The meeting that was expected to dwell on 17 agendas, including the disputed Nepal 2020 League. On behalf of the seven dissatisfied members, Rishi Ram Gautam had submitted the letter demanding the resignation of Khan President. In addition to Gautam, Chumbi Lama, Daud Ansari, Sanjay Raj Singh, Karan Mahatara, Amit Bir Pandey and Dharmaraj Giri had also signed the letter. Further updates on the meeting's results are awaited. Meanwhile, the National Sports Council is preparing to take actions against Cricket Association of Nepal CAN in relation to the match-fixing allegation during the Nepal T20 League. The Council has said actions will be taken based on Sports Development Act 2077, which includes provisions for suspension. However, it is expected the Council will not suspend the association anytime soon as International Cricket Council does not validate government interference. Based on the sub-article 7 of the Act, associations will have a chance for clarification before the Council decides to suspend the institution, which is what has been expected for CAN. On 5th of January, the Council had formed a five-member committee to probe on the match-fixing allegations against the Nepal T20 League. The committee has recommended for actions against CAN officials. The Council has meanwhile said it will coordinate with ICC on the course of future action. Up next is the weather update. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.